Welcome to Park and DC Science LEHS Coordinator Administration Training. During this training, we're going to discuss the Park and DC Science assessments, how some of their qualities have been merged this year um, to simplify the process for our administrators, um, and the administration processes that test coordinators will go through to prepare for these two assessments. The Park assessment measures DC's English language arts and mathematics standards, and the DC Science assessment measures the next generation science standards. PARC is given to students in grades three through eight and once in high school, and DC Science is taken each spring in grades five, eight, and once in high school biology. Participation policy for these assessments is on our website. Feel free to take a look at those to make sure that your students are enrolled for the appropriate assessments. PARC and DC Science are managed through the Pearson Access Next online system which is used by test coordinators and test administrators to set up students for testing and to manage and monitor them while they are testing. Students will be using the TestNav 8 system to take their test, which is a program that will need to be added to student devices so that they can sign in and begin their assessment. Pearson Access Next allows users to access the platform through administrations. Previously, Park and DC Science were in different administrations, so you may have noticed that you had to toggle between the two. One update for this year as we merge these two assessments into the one program is that that will no longer be the case. For 2019, both of these assessments will be in one administration, so be able to see them in the upper right-hand side of the screen together as 2019 Spring Park and DC Science. An update to TestNav 8 is that in the past we did have some options for web browsers. One of the most common that was successful was um, using Mozilla. It is no longer available um, as a tool for taking the assessment as a web browser. Um, we do recommend that all schools use the TestNav application. It can be downloaded using the link at the bottom of the screen to student devices and is the best option for students in terms of testing for this year. As we bring the Park and DC Science Assessment together, we have updated the Park and Pearson website to include DC Science. So a lot of the resources that you'll be using for the DC Science Assessment are very similar to ones that were used for PARC in the past, including Pearson Access Next user guides. We'll also be putting up sample assessments in this location. So this is a one location that you'll be able to use for both assessments at dc.mypearsonsupports.com. The Pearson Access Next user guide is a helpful tool that many of you may have used in the past. There have been some updates just to the process of locating information to make it a bit more streamlined. Uh, but this system is still available and will provide you with lots of information, including a list of steps to perform a task. It will also show you screenshots of that task and sometimes have a video available to show you how to perform that task. The TestNav 8 user guide is also available and updated so that everyone knows how to set up technology for the assessment and make sure that TestNav is functioning properly for students as they begin testing. Training modules are available. Many of them were created for the park assessment, so they will say park next to them, but the work that you'll be doing in the system will be the same for DC Science. Um, so any of these modules should be applicable to both of the assessments, and they can help you with some basic tasks um, and take you through a video and some explanation of how to complete those. Now we're gonna talk through test administration in chronological order to get a sense of the preparations that need to be made for both of these assessments. We'll start with training, then we'll talk through staff roles and registration for students, setting up technology for testing, creating your testing schedule, training your staff, and then creating test sessions in the Pearson Access Next system. For the Park and DC Science Assessment, the first priority is making sure that all LEA test coordinators have attended test security training. Um, this is a required training, but the other trainings listed on this page are optional. We will be offering some workshops where we'll work with users to make sure that they're able to set up the SRPMP, as well as test sessions in the Pearson system. Uh, we also have a technology training that we do with technology coordinators each year with the Pearson team, and then two additional trainings that we'll do closer towards testing and after testing, just to make sure that you have all your tasks set up and ready to go during those periods of the testing process. Assigning staff roles is important. We want to make sure that we have a structure that's set up for success. Um, the LEA coordinator will be overseeing all other people who are part of the LEA. Um, 
the school coordinator will oversee the school. Sometimes those are one and the same if your LEA is just a one school LEA, but if you have a number of different schools involved, the LEA role is a bit different in terms of how it oversees school coordinators. School coordinators work with their staff to really set up the schedule and make sure that everyone is trained at the school level. So they'll be working with a special education coordinator who will help them to make sure students have the accommodations and accessibility features they need. They'll work with a technology coordinator to make sure that everything is set up and the systems are running properly, both for the staff that are using Pearson Access Next, as well as the students who are using TestNav8 on their student devices. Test administrators, they will be trained to make sure that they're ready to give the tests and follow the scripts. Proctors will be assigned to classrooms so that they can work with test administrators to make sure that everything is running smoothly during testing. And then authorized personnel, maybe any other individual who may be involved in testing in some way, entering a testing environment, um, they would also be trained by the school test coordinator. Assigning staff roles happens in a couple locations. For Park and DC Science, we want to make sure that we document it in our school test security plan. We also want to put it in the school test security file, and then also in Pearson Access Next. Assigning roles in Pearson Access Next will allow staff to complete the tasks that they need to before testing, during testing, and after testing. Pearson has updated the user role matrix, so we do have um, a simplification of some of the roles that we used to have in the past. Um, this year we will have LEA test coordinators, school coordinators, test administrators, technology and special education coordinators. Um, we hope that these roles make it really clear and the permissions that are assigned to them are set up specifically for DC users. So once people are assigned these roles, they will have permissions in the system. Um, if you're an LEA or school test coordinator, you can assign roles to other people in the system and provide access to your staff. Registering students aligns with a student's grade or course. So OSSI will register students in grades three through for PARC. That has already happened, so it should be in the system for you. And then we'll also uh, register students in grades five through eight for DC Science, which has also occurred. So if you go in and look at your student registration file in the system in Pearson Access Next, those students should already be there. LEAs will verify this registration during this period um, and make sure that grades three through eight are assigned appropriately, all students are accounted for, and make adjustments for grades seven and eight mathematic courses if you have students who are taking advanced coursework. You'll also register all high school students at the LEA level for both PARC and DC Science. Because their registration is course-based, it doesn't necessarily go by grade level, and so you'll need to make sure that students are registered by the appropriate courses that they're taking. Registration is uploaded into Pearson Access Next, um, most often through a spreadsheet called the Student Registration and Personal Needs Profile, which we refer to frequently as the SRPNP. This also includes accommodations and accessibility features for students, so it's a file with a lot of information. There's a guide for filling it out which tells you row by row and column by column what information needs to be there, the values that you need in each cell, and how to upload the information into the system. So this guide is a really important thing to use when you're doing that process. Part of the SRPMP process is documenting accommodations and accessibility features, and for this you'll want to work with a special education coordinator at your school to ensure that students receive everything they're entitled to. Um, in terms of planning for these features, you want to make sure that you have policies to assign them equitably. Accommodations and accessibility features should be reflective of a student's typical testing experience, so ensure that they're assigned to students in a way that they're familiar with the process and that meet their needs for what they normally test like on a regular basis. Students should also practice using these accommodations and features. If they are used with the assistance of a test administrator, they should practice using them with that person. If they're used individually, they can practice using them in the system. Part of the process of using the SRPNP is ensuring that um, Pearson can provide materials to schools in a timely manner. So we ask that the SRPNP be completed by February 22nd. That way Pearson can ship accommodated materials to schools. If there are students who have accommodation changes after this point, we do have the option for additional orders where materials can be placed for those particular students, but the bulk of information we wanna have ordered early on. Accessibility features don't require materials, so we do allow schools to complete accessibility feature information in the PNP a bit later. Uh, we ask that that's done before you submit your school test security plan because we'll be checking for that information at that time. The SEDS crosswalk was created to serve as a reference to make sure that accommodations match between IEPs and the SRPMP file. There's codes and lots of names and information in IEPs 
and sometimes it differs slightly from what is in the SRPMP file, so we want to make sure that there is a language equivalent for each of those, so please do look that up on our website. Administration of the Park and DC Science Assessments will be similar in many ways this year, but one area where there are some slight differences is the accommodations that are provided for both. Um, here's a list of computer-based accommodations that are provided within the park assessment, some for math, some for ELA, and then a corresponding uh, check mark for those that are provided in the DC Science Assessment for computer-based testing. All of this information is available in an appendix in the Test Coordinator Manual. We also provide information there on paper-based accommodations for DC Science and for Park, as well as other accommodations. So do look up this information and use it as a reference as you're completing the SRPNP. And if there is an accommodation that you don't see available for DC Science, it's likely to be reflected on this list as one that may not be available. Materials that students need along with test coordinator manuals, um, test administrator manuals, and return shipping materials will be sent to schools around March 13th um, that week. They may arrive separately for Park and DC Science, so be aware of that. Um, when you receive your materials, check and make sure everything has been provided. There will be an inventory list for you. Um, and then keep any secure materials locked away that would include any sort of test booklets, student answer sheets, anything that would have testing information on it needs to be locked away. There are many materials that do need to be returned to Pearson. This year we've included a label on each of those materials that says secure materials shipped to Pearson. It'll be found on the front or the back of each of the items that you receive that needs to be returned. So do keep that in mind when you're looking for your items at the end of testing and also when you're organizing things at the beginning when you first receive your shipments. Scorable materials are materials that actually get scored by Pearson once they are shipped back, which only applies to the park assessment. So for the park assessment, the shipping deadline for scorable materials includes materials that students um, have from taking paper-based tests, and those need to be shipped um, on May 24th to make sure that they get back to Pearson on time. Non-scorable materials are other materials that are secure, but don't necessarily need to be scored by Pearson. So this would include human reader scripts, this would include um, students uh, who are taking the DC Science Assessment um, because their work will actually be transcribed. Um, so the deadlines for park shipping for non-scorable materials is May 31st. Since DC Science ends a week later, the shipping deadline for that would be June 7th. When you're creating your test schedule, it's important to take into account the number of units and the amount of time that each unit takes. We want to make everyone aware that for field test items, which are used to supply items for future administrations, the math assessment and DC science assessment have those items embedded into the assessment, so there would be no changes in units or time based on those. But the park and ELA field tests are actually an additional unit taken by select grades in DC. For 2019, those grades will be four and seven. They will have an additional unit of ELA. This test schedule provides information and details, um, both highlighting that that unit for grades four and seven is included as an additional fourth unit for Park ELA, and also letting you know the amount of time and the number of units for each grade, because it does vary by assessment and by grade level. Authorized personnel need to be trained at the school level. Um, OSSI does a train the trainer model, so we provide training to the staff who will be working as LEA test coordinators. They provide training to school test coordinators, and school test coordinators provide training to staff at the school, including all of the roles that we discussed earlier. Your training should include information about test security, as well as administrative information so that everyone's prepared for the schedule, they understand how the manuals work, and they're ready to give the assessment in a secure way, and also ready to give the assessment with all of the details that they need. Creating test sessions is the next step. You want to make sure that once your students are registered and everyone is trained, that the students are grouped together um, based on who they will be testing with and what sort of groupings or classrooms they will be testing in. So test sessions organize our students into groups that allow the test administrator to manage the students during testing. If you have a large group of students testing as a full class of maybe 20 students, um, you would have those testing together in one session. If there are some students from that class who would be removed and testing a small group or individually, they would have a session that was based on who they're testing with. So you might have a group of three students for a small group and maybe one student who's testing individually who would be in a session by themselves. The sessions are created with naming conventions to make sure that everything is organized. 
and we can find information here at Aussie and you can find information and your team can find information quickly. To do this, we have session name set up as subject, grade, test administrator initials, and then at the end we put R for a regular session and M for a makeup session. Uh, the way this usually turns out would be something like ELA03JD.R. Test administrators are also put in the system and attached to every session. Um, this can be done through the SRPNP file. We put in test administrators as last name dot first name, so something like Doe dot Jane. This is a required element before your school test security plan is approved. We do need all of this information set up, so please make sure that it is in the system and it is accurately entered with the naming conventions that OSSI requires. Once the system and your staff are prepared for testing, it's time to administer the test to students. To do this, we want to talk through setting up classrooms to make sure that they're prepared for testing, ensuring students are receiving those accommodations and accessibility features that they've been assigned, and administering the test to students with our test administrator manuals and scripts. The secure testing environment is extremely important, so before beginning test administration on the day of testing or a little bit before that, we want to make sure that we prepare our classrooms. It's Aussie's goal for schools and LEAs to deliver a uniform and equitable statewide assessment program and for assessments to yield fair and accurate results because they're based on standardized and consistent conditions. To ensure consistency while students are testing, we want to avoid having certain materials available either on the walls or in front of our students. Those things might include something like steps for success, um, student work that's posted, timelines and life cycles and equations that are posted in our classrooms. We want to make sure that the things that are posted on the wall are covered if they could be used by the student to support them in the assessment um, so that the students have an equitable environment for testing. To do that, we either cover those prohibited materials by putting paper over them, um, providing dividers to students to make sure that they can't see each other's screens, or we can remove those prohibited materials um, and separate student desks so that they're further apart. For each individual student, we want to make sure that the setup is appropriate and they have what they need for testing. For Park and DC Science online testing, that would include their testing device, a student testing ticket for them to log into the system, a pencil with an eraser, an additional eraser is always a, um, something you can provide, and then scratch paper, which can be blank, it can be lined as you see in the picture here, or it can be graph paper if you're using it for math. Optional materials might include students having a reference sheet, which are available for some of the park assessments. Um, they are all in the system, so the students can access them in the computer, but you can also print them if you'd like them to have them handy. Dividers to help separate student desks, um, and mints are often given out to students during testing as well, so all of those are optional materials. Students may have materials related to accommodations and accessibility features. Headphones can be used as a noise buffer, as well as for students to hear text-to-speech. Word-to-word dictionaries may be used for English learners. Calculators may be used for students with a calculator accommodation or by students who wanted to use a handheld calculator during calculator portions of the assessment when their calculator aligns to the one that's already provided in the system. It's extremely important that we ensure that all students with accommodations are provided with the appropriate materials and supports that they need during testing. Test administrators should be trained to administer these accommodations and students should be also be able to practice them in advance. We want to make sure that the accommodations are administered appropriately and that everyone involved is comfortable with them. Misadministration of accommodations when a student did not receive an accommodation or receives an accommodation that they should not have um, does result in a test being invalidated. So we want to make sure that on the front end we are absolutely certain that students have what they need and do not have accommodations that they should not be assigned so that we don't run into any challenges with that. It's also important to ensure that students are provided with the accessibility features that they've been assigned in their personal needs profile and that test administrators are aware of which students are using them in the testing environment and how those are used. The test administrator should be trained and the students should have time to practice with these prior to testing to ensure that everyone's ready. There is a way for test administrators to ensure in the system that students are receiving the accommodations and accessibility features that they are supposed to. Uh, the ones that are provided by the system in TestNav 8 have indicators that are listed on the back of the test administrator manual, and there are little keys like TTS for text-to-speech that show up next to the student's name. 
So if you have this list of students that includes 25 students in your class and you know three of them have text-to-speech, you should see the TTS icon next to those three students and that'll ensure that they're being provided the accommodation when the test starts and you begin testing for the day. Test administrators will be giving directions to students during testing. Um, they'll be following the policies and guidance set forth in our test administrator manuals, which come in a paper-based and computer-based version. They do combine Park and DC Science into one location. Testing scripts are provided inside of the manuals and must be read verbatim to students. Test administrators and proctors should be actively monitoring throughout testing as they learned about in test security training. They may not view student assessments unless they are providing accommodations that require them to do so. They may not coach students during testing. And policies for breaks, if uh, they are taken, are outlined in the test administrator manuals, but also have some scripted directions if needed. During testing, there may be a OSSI monitor who visits um, for Parking DC Science to ensure compliance and check on the schools. Um, we do that throughout the district to make sure that everything is going well and make sure that policies are being followed. Um, monitors do not provide prior notice and they also do not provide feedback during their visit. They are simply there to observe. Um, and any questions that you have about their visit can be directed towards the Office of Assessment. After testing is complete for individual students, if other students are still testing, um, they are welcome to do a few different silent activities. Um, once all of their materials have been collected, do make sure that everything has been collected so they don't have anything left on their desk related to the test. Students can complete silent activities um, or they can exit the room depending on the policies of their school. The activities could include reading a novel, um, drawing or coloring, um, or completing a, a worksheet that is unrelated to testing content. So we like to say if you're taking the math assessment, they're welcome to do a crossword puzzle. If you're taking the ELA assessment, they're welcome to do Sudoku. Um, just kind of make sure that it's not related to what's happening in the testing space at that time. All right, let's talk a little about closing out testing once students are finished. So when we close out testing, there's a lot of materials that we have to handle. Some get shredded, some recycled, and some returned. Um, and there's also documentation that gets submitted to a couple different locations. We'll talk through those steps. Closing out and stopping tests happens in Pearson Access Next. Um, you'll have sessions that you've been monitoring and working with. And each of those sessions, when all students are finished testing, um, get stopped. As you can see here on the screen, you'll click the Stop Session button, and that'll wrap up the session as long as all students have finished. At the end of testing, there will be a number of materials that need to be handled. Secure materials that need to be shredded include student testing tickets, scratch paper, and reference sheets that students used as scratch paper and may have written on. Non-scorable materials that we recycle are test administrator and test coordinator manuals, reference sheets that students didn't write on, and rulers and other resources that Pearson provided. Secure materials that need to get returned will have those labels that we mentioned earlier. They include the Park and DC Science student test booklets. Remember to transcribe those DC Science test booklets before they are sent back to Pearson and put them in the Test Navigate system for scoring. And human reader scripts need to be returned. Scorable materials that need to be returned include the Park student answer sheets and Park third grade test booklets because those booklets are where third graders put their answers. The Park Paper Answer Sheets are scored by Pearson, as I mentioned before, so those are scorable materials and can go directly into the box that you're shipping back. DC Science does need to be put into the computer and TestNet 8 um, if it is a paper-based test prior to being sent back. This does include all paper-based DC Science tests. Um, they would need to be put into the system. And there is um, information in the manual about how to go through that process. It's done by two people at the school, usually the test coordinator and one other individual. Um, and if it is not done in advance, as we said, um, if they're not transcribed, they may not be scored. All right, directions for shipping materials um, are outlined in the manual. Scorable materials must be shipped back to Pearson no later than May 24th. Again, that's only related to park scorable materials. And then all non-scorable materials will be shipped back to Pearson no later than May 31st for park um, and DC Science materials on June 7th. Documentation, um, OSSI will need some information from each of our schools, including test security affidavits, which are due 10 business days after the last day of testing, and then just the completion of the test security file, making sure that everything you did with 
um, any issues or incidents that arose, any reports, any changes, uh, making sure that everything that needs to be documented is in that file. That information wraps up the process for administration for Park and DC Science, so let's talk a little bit about next steps for you as you begin to prepare. There are additional trainings that we offer. There's a schedule listed online that has a number of options for Park and DC Science as well as other assessments you may be working with, so please do take a look at those and sign up for any opportunities that fit your needs. We also have our points of contact list here. If you have questions during testing, please feel free to reach out to our team. Other resources for Park and DC Science are mostly through the Pearson system. There's, of course, the testing platform. Um, there's also some assessment resources at mypearsonsupport.com. Assessment manuals are available online now in the same location at mypearsonsupport.com. And training modules. Also, Park Online and DC Science websites provide a little more context about the framework of how the assessments were built if you are interested in learning more about that end. Uh, the Pearson Customer Support Hotline is available. The number is listed here. It's also listed in Pearson Access Next and the training site with hours. Um, they're open quite a broad range of hours each day and are already open. So if you have questions as you're putting in the SRPNP, feel free to give them a call. They're happy to help out with that. Um, and we will be opening the Aussie Support Hotline in a few weeks. Um, so you can also contact Aussie, which is usually used more often during testing for support. If you have any questions about today's training, please feel free to reach out to our team. We're happy to answer any questions that you have as you go through the process of preparing your school and your students for testing.